Church, the Lord be with you. Thank you so much. Um, welcome in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My name is Jonathan. I get the privilege of being the pastor here at Timnath Church, and it's so good to be together once again on this Sunday where we're gathered as God's baptized people to lift up our voices in praise and in prayer, to listen for God's word to us on this day, to trust that God meets us in this place so that we can go as witnesses to his kingdom in Timnath and Fort Collins and Severance and wherever he sends us this week. Know you're welcome in this place. As we gather together, I'd ask if there are announcements to be shared for the good of the community. Bev has one in the back. So if... Whoa. So it's loud today. <laughs> if, if you would like a name badge, the sign-up sheet is out in the narthex. Please um, sign up for a name badge. would love to know who you are. And uh, um, if you've lost yours, go ahead and sign up again. Thanks, Bev. Uh, I've got three real brief announcements for you. Um, one is that next Sunday at noon, um, there will be a memorial service for Mary Kraus, um, our sister in Christ who completed her baptism back in November, um, and the family will be able to be here to have a service next Sunday, and you're all invited, um, if you knew Mary, or even if you didn't, to give thanks for her life and to commend her to her Savior. So that will be next Sunday at noon. This Sunday to get today, this Sunday today, Right. Here. You're here. Um, there's, of course, uh, our annual congregational meeting after worship, um, which you're invited to stay for, whether you brought something to share or not. There's always enough food to go around. Um, we'll start in the sanctuary with our official meeting and work through a few items, uh, mostly sharing a celebration of ways we've seen God working and um, praying he will continue to work in the next year and then going to eat, which is the best part, right? Um, and then today during the service, just a note for you, today is what we're calling a fourth family Sunday. Um, as you know, most weeks our children ages four and through eight, four through ten, whatever, um, go out for young children in worship. But on the fourth Sunday of the month, we're inviting them to stay in worship. There's still a nursery for our smallest disciples, but for those slightly older ones, um, we're inviting them to be with us. And during the sermon, they're invited to be at a table over here where they're uh, able to work with their hands while they participate in the worship service. We're just experimenting. So grateful for um, your willingness to experiment with us and also grateful for your patience with your pastor if he gets a little distracted during the sermon. Um, are there any other announcements? Phyllis. It's loud. It's loud. Okay. Uh, for those of you that are youth group age, starting with um, going into sixth grade, uh, I think you should know about this, but I just wanted to give you a special invitation. Uh, this Wednesday night from six to eight, we've been kind of rotating homes for the youth group kids to go to, just to have different locations. But uh, you're all invited uh, for that age group to come to um, Clarence's in my house this Wednesday from 6 to 8 for supper and games and a little bit of uh, a devotion time. So uh, let Diane know, if you haven't already, that you can come. Thank you. Thanks, Phyllis. Paula. There's a sign-up sheet in the Narthex for Adult Sunday School. We would like you to sign up so that we can get a book ordered for you. Thank you. Thanks, Paula. Okay, well, let's prepare our hearts and our minds now then for worship with our discipline of silence. We quiet ourselves before the Lord and then the ringing of the bell calling us to attention.
a call to worship. For God alone my soul awaits in silence. From him comes my salvation. Lord Jesus, by your spirit, draw us now to the Father's heart, that at home with you we may know your joy, share in your love, and be changed by your glory. Amen. We are going to sing our first hymn on page 308 in your hymnal, O God in Whom All Life Begins. to confession, Jesus says, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe. Let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, believing in the good news of grace. Our prayer of confession. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. In what we have thought, in what we have said, in what we have done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk to the light. Thank you. 
when the kindness of love of God our Savior appeared. He saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. As God has offered us peace in Christ, let us share Christ's peace with each other. The peace of Christ be with you, also with you. Peace. Prayer for illumination. Guide us now, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your right we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's reading is going to be from Psalm. You can find it in your Pew Bible on page 548. Psalms 92, 1 through 4, and 12 through 15. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work at the works of your hands, I sing for joy. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they will produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap, showing that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no righteousness in him. The word of the Lord. Children and those who would like to join may come up to the front for the children's story. You want a chair? No, I can't see Okay. I can help you get up. <laughs> 
away. They're a long ways away. They're a long ways away. Okay, we'll move. And then you're really going to have to. Good morning. Thank you. Okay, last week, Mr. Gregg gave me a great idea because he came last week and said, what are all these, th what's going on in children of worship? And it made me realize most of the people in here don't know. So, I need help. Are you ready? Okay, when we leave this room, how do we get to the children in worship room? How do we walk? We do not run. <laughs> How do we get there? Do we walk slowly and quietly? Because when we get there, someone may be talking with God and we don't want to disturb them. Okay, so we're kind of sitting like we would be sitting in there. What's the first thing we do? We greet each other, and we say, I want fingers up here like this. The Lord be with you. with you. Okay. We were going to sing the song, but I don't think that's going to work out so well in here. <laughs> don't think that's happening. Is, could that happen? So, do we say the Lord be with you when we're in, in church? We do. Do we sing songs when we're in church? Do we hear stories when we're in church? Do we work when we're in church? Most Sundays, no. But this Sunday, you have the opportunity to work in church. And we do all kinds of different work. We do... Uh, yeah, but I was going to say Play-Doh. Play-Doh, you can work with the stories. We do all kinds of things. Then we get back together, and we... Light the candle. And why did... And this back and forth is not working so well. We light the candle to remind us that God is with us when we read his holy word. And then when we finish, oh, we, we, blow, we don't blow out the candle, we snuff the candle because that light of Christ will go with us wherever we may go. Okay. Let's pray. Dear God, will you pray with me? Okay. Dear God, thank you for the opportunity we have to be with you in different ways. Help us to take what we learn and use it to glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Are you going to bless? Church, what is your prayer for these children? And also with you. May you hear God's word and grow in God's grace. Amen. Okay, today I want you to do 
the slow walking over to the table. And thank you. But I just want to start with two quotes this morning, actually, to get going. And thankfully, I found two people who were willing to read them for me this morning, so I don't have to. Uh, so, Jean, Greg. If you haven't met Jean yet, here he is. He's the one who prepares our coffee almost yes. every Sunday morning and so many other things in the church. So grateful. He's going to read one sentence, one sentence. from the late pastor, missionary, theologian, <laughs> Leslie Newbegin. Take it away. When the message of the kingdom is divorced from the person of Jesus, it becomes a program of ideology, but not a gospel. It's so short. Can you read it one more time? Yes. <laughs> when the message of the kingdom is divorced from the person of Jesus, it becomes a program of an ideology, but not a gospel. Not a gospel. Thank not you. Not a gospel. All right. And Greg, Greg is going to read for us just a short poem by the late Presbyterian pastor Eugene Peace Peterson. The poem's called Message. A long climb it was to the top of the mountain, 35 years all told, counting in detours and rest stops, 35 years in the company of friends and family, climbing, climbing, climbing. Sundays were blaze marks as we hiked our way through scree and scrub alder, picking huckleberries, learning, the high country language from journals and letters of pioneer climbers. The summit was sudden. We caught our breath as range after range spread out beneath us. Stunned into silence, we caught our breath as range after range spread out beneath us. Stunned to silence again, our voiceless praise choired with firs and saskatoons. Every mountain a pulpit and the message out. Here! Oh, he's here! Look! Listen. Amazing. Thank you. Hey, would you give both of them some thanks for helping us this morning? It can be a little intimidating to stand up here. Thank you guys so much. I love that last line in Peterson's poem. Here! Oh, he's here! Look, listen, um, that's actually an invitation that Jesus gives this morning in our gospel message. If you've been with us, uh, we've been making a swift march through the gospel of Mark and um, listening as Jesus breaks onto the scene. Last week, we heard how he offered that deep healing of forgiveness. This morning, we join him again by the sea as he continues to teach. And you're invited to listen. Do what you need to listen carefully. Listen well. For this, too, is God's word to us from the book we love. Matthew 4. Mark 4. Again, he began to teach beside the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around him. He got into a boat on the sea and sat there 
while the whole crowd was gathered beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables. And in his teaching, he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some of the seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil. And it sprang up quickly because it had no depth of soil. When the sun rose, it was scorched. And since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell on good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and producing and yielding 30 and 60 and 100 fold. And he said, let those with ears to hear listen. When he was alone, those who were around him, along with the 12 disciples, asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything comes in parables in order that, quote, they may indeed look but not perceive and may indeed listen but not hear, that they may not turn again and be forgiven. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. And these are the ones on the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan quickly comes and takes the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. They hear the word and immediately receive it with joy. But they have no root. So when the trials and troubles and persecution arise on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are those sown among the thorns. They hear the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things comes in, chokes the word, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown on the good soil. They hear the word and accept it and bear fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. He said to them, is a lamp brought in and put under a bushel basket or under a bed and not on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden that is not to be revealed. And there is no secret except to come to light. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear, for the measure you give will be the measure you get, and even more will be given to you. For to everyone who has, more will be given, but for those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. He also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. They do not know how. First the stalk, the earth produces of itself. First the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, for the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is as if a mustard seed was sown upon the ground, which when sown is the smallest of seeds on the earth, yet when it is sown, it grows and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, putting forth large branches so the birds of the air can come and make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private. To his disciples. This is the word of the Lord. We say, thanks be to God. So God, once again, we come 
And we ask that you would sow the seed of your word. And that you would do what only you can in the power of your spirit, which is to make this word a way in which we hear the voice of the living word, our Lord, and know his presence in our midst. We ask this together in his name, and we say, amen. To you has been given the secret of the kingdom. I'm looking for my sermon manuscript, and I'm not seeing it. But we'll try to go for it anyway. (laughs) To you has been given the secret of the kingdom. (laughs) To you has been given not a sermon manuscript, but the secret of the kingdom. There were many Saturdays when I was a child when my grandfather would um, come and take me on secret adventures. Abuelo, I called him. He would make the long drive, three houses down, from 24415 Linden to 14415 Fenton, pull up the driveway in his old white Chrysler. I'd get in and we'd go. And sometimes I didn't know the destination until we arrived the Detroit Institute of Arts, Ebby's Tamales in Mexican Town for lunch, Phil's Fish Market to get goods for Sunday supper. I loved those secret adventures. So much, I've tried to do some with my own kids. Not a grandparent yet, but I've got kids. I say, hey, let's go on an adventure. They say, where? I say, it's a secret. They say, ah. Uh. <laughs> I hate secrets. We hate surprises. Just tell us. I wonder if that's a little of what the disciples want to say when Jesus tells them, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. What? What's the secret? Just tell us. But instead, Jesus tells these stories, parables, which must be important, these ones, because actually in Mark's gospel, unlike the other gospel writers, Mark only pauses his swift narrative to give us extended teaching from Jesus, like two times. This is one of those times. With this Parable, Jesus tells, of of a sower who goes out to sow, a a farmer who plants a prolific amount of seed, throwing it everywhere. So some falls on a path where it's eaten up, and some falls among rocks where it has no roots, and some falls among thorns where it's choked, and some, some, some falls on good soil where it grows and becomes a harvest larger than expected. And like Peterson, the poet, Jesus says, look, listen. Let anyone with ears to hear. Get it. But the disciples are like, we don't get it. And Jesus is like, oi, and he explains it. (laughs) The sower sows the word. The, The soils are about reception. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. The sower sows the word. The soil's about reception. And then Jesus keeps talking about seed. Seed sown and grown and harvested in. Mustard seed, which you may know grows a little bit like a weed. It's just prolific. He keeps telling these stories, some of which perhaps can seem about as clear as mud, except he thinks we should get it because he says to his disciples, then and now, to you, to you, has been given the secret of the kingdom, the interpretive key. But apparently, it's not secret knowledge because the disciples often don't know. So what's the secret? Where are we going here? Just tell us. 
Is it, is it that we know we must beware? Beware, for Satan comes like a bird swooping down to steal what's been given to you. Beware of living thorny lives that lead nowhere. That seems to be part of it. What's the secret? Is it that we knew we need to prepare? Prepare the, the soil of our interior space, rake the rocks, put in the fertilizer. That's a song I used to sing in church. Lord, let my heart be good soil, open to your word. It seems to be part of the point here. What's the secret? Just tell us. Is it that we know we must beware? Or is it that we know we must prepare? Both of those seem like parts of this story. But if we begin with that, if that's the first place we go, then that means the secret of the kingdom, the interpretive key begins with me. My life. My knowledge and action, what I do. And one thing Jesus is very clear about is that the parables are first about God. God's knowledge and action. What God is doing. And in that case, it seems pretty clear that God is the one who has gone out like this sower, this farmer who farms and plants a prolific amount of seed. And Jesus says the seed that is sown is the word. And one of the things we know, one of the things we believe in Christianity is that the word of God is not just a principle to be grasped. The word of God is not just instruction to be followed. The word of God is not just a program to get on board with. The word of God is not just a sense of priorities we might follow. The word of God, first and foremost, is a person. Do do you remember how John, I know we're in Mark, but do you remember how John begins his gospel? In the beginning was the, and the word was with God and the Word was, he was in the beginning with God. Through him all things came into being. Without him not one thing came into being. And what has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. And then John says, the Word became flesh and lived among us. Or maybe Mark would say, the Word was sown and seen and came to be with us. Christ. And once we get that, Once we put on that lens, we begin to see how every part of this parable, all the parables, first point to him. What he is doing, and therefore only then what we are to do as disciples. Think about this. How does Jesus begin his ministry in Mark? Proclaiming, the kingdom of God is come near, because I'm here. And immediately, what does he face in the wilderness? Satan, swooping in like a bird to steal and tempt and destroy. It's the path. And as he continues his ministry, what does he find? People who immediately receive his word with joy. Think of the crowds. But who will soon fall away as they find his call includes a cross. And as he continues, what does he find? People who hear him but have a hard time following because of the thorns of life. Think of the young man who comes to him and says, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He says, follow the commands of God. He says, I have. He says, good, you lack one thing. Sell all your possessions, give the money to the poor, and follow me. And then Mark says, he went away grieving. Why? For he had many possessions. And still yet, what does Jesus find? Folks, some who hear him and adhere to him and won't let go. They left their nets and followed. Do you see? Every part of the parable, every field we find in the parable is first not a metaphor for your soul space, 
Every field in the parable is first about something Jesus is facing in his own ministry. Every turn in the parable first is pointing to him. He is the seed sown by the Father, full of the life of the kingdom come. He is the lamp, not under a bushel, but on a lampstand for all who have the eyes of faith to see. He is the mustard seed, so small, seemingly insignificant, yet when put in the ground, planted, grows up to be the greatest of shrubs, the one who will extend the arms of his branches on the cross for all to come and build their nest to find a home with the Father. He is the secret of the kingdom given to you. What does Newbegin say? Gene read it for us. When the message of the kingdom is divorced from the person of Jesus, it becomes a program, an ideology, but not a gospel. Not good news. It becomes, it, it, it becomes soil improvement. How can I make my life look? But not good news. Jesus doesn't come here teaching about soil improvement. Jesus comes with good news because he's giving himself. And once we get that, once we get that, we then begin to know that the question is not, well, will I hear his teaching and accept what he has to say and get on board with the program, the ideology, but the question rather is, will I hear him? Will I accept him? Will I add here to him like roots in soil and let him produce the good fruit of his life in me? So many uh, religions, even the Christians, I don't know a lot about religions, but I know enough to know that so many present, and sometimes Christianity is presented this way, that the, the way to holiness is adhere to these principles. The way to God is follow this path. The way up is keeping keeping these commandments. But what Jesus is saying is radically personal. He doesn't say, adhere to this. He says, adhere to me. He doesn't just say, listen to this. He says, listen to me. It is so personal. The secret of the kingdom is given to you. And the question is, will we hear? Will we accept him? Will we adhere to him? Or will we look for something else? See, in the first century, when Jesus is preaching, Israel is looking, looking, looking hard for good news. They are dominated by a foreign power for hundreds of years. They are looking for good news, but they need it to take a particular shape, the shape of power. They want it to be the good news of the Messiah who comes in to make Jerusalem great again. It's his slogan. They want it as the good news of God coming in power to uproot all their enemies, the kingdom coming in a blaze of glory, and instead Jesus says, oh, it's like a seed planted. What? A little insignificant seed? It's like a seed hidden in the womb of an unwed mother for nine months, Mary. It's like, it's like a seed sprouting up in the backwoods of Nazareth for 30 years. It's like a seed open to blight, the blight of betrayal. It's like a seed, which as any seed, has to be broken and buried in the earth, like his body, before it can bear new life. But all the new life it will bring. Yet for many who looked, They saw the seed as too small, too insignificant, too awful on the cross to accept. This can't be the kingdom. And what I'd like to say is, of course, I look with wide eyes of open faith. I look so differently than Jesus first hears. When I look for the power of God, I look for it in all the right ways. But who am I kidding? How often... I want good news to be God sweeping me off my feet. God coming in swift power to do all the things I want him to do. God coming to be grateful for all the ways I give myself to him and to this church. And instead Jesus says, shh, listen. And look at the way that I am giving myself 
instead to you. The kingdom of God, the secret has been given to you. Like a seed, just a seed, yet a seed that says, here, accept, let me bear fruit in your life that is glorifying to the Father and good for your neighbors. That's what Jesus does. That's what Jesus is doing here. That's what Jesus comes to do, to give us the secret of the kingdom by giving us himself, his life, his spirit, which means what we're invited to do is not first say, well, look what I'm going to do for you, God, but to be receptive. It begins in stillness. That discipleship begins in me doing nothing, but being receptive to the sower and the seed, producing in me far more than I can ask or imagine grain of the kingdom of God, a harvest greater than I would have seen coming that is good for my neighbors here in Timnath and helps me grow up into the likeness of Christ. That's what God's been doing, friends, for some 2,000 plus years. The sower has gone out. The seed of the kingdom has been scattered. The secret of the kingdom has been given as Jesus, who has ascended on high, pours out his Holy Spirit to grow new life in all who have eyes to see and ears to hear. And no matter how many birds have swept in to eat, no matter how many thorns have grown up to choke, no matter how many people have tried to pluck out the church, like a mustard weed, it has just proliferated. You pull one out, there's another, there's another, there's another. It's a miracle, actually. The church is still here. The harvest is happening. But it's not just the church in the world. It's this church. In this part of the world, Timnath, for 140 years, the sower has gone out, the seed of the kingdom has been scattered, the secret of the kingdom has been given as Jesus has offered himself, his spirit, his life to all with eyes to see and ears to hear in this place. And in every generation, there have been people who hear and accept and bear fruit. And for every person who's walked out the door saying, I find nothing, there's been another and another and another who says, I find more and even more. The harvest happens. But it's not just back then, the history of Timnath. It's now, 2024. The sower goes out. The seed of the kingdom is scattered. The secret of the kingdom is offered to you. Not a program. Not just principles. But the person of Christ saying, hear me. Accept me. Adhere to me. Like roots. And let me produce the fruit of the kingdom in you, and through you for others. What is that going to look like for us this year? I don't know. That's something we figure out together. But if we're talking in parables, maybe it looks like a little bit, my grandfather pulling up in his old white Chrysler. Jesus pulls up every weekend in his old white Chrysler, and he says, let's go on a secret adventure. And we say, where? And he says, with me. That's all we need to know. Or maybe we take a point from the poet, Eugene, and it means gathering every week and reminding one another, here, oh, he's here. Look, listen. Let anyone with ears to hear, listen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. body or in spirit. One of the things we get to do as Christians is keep telling one another about the faith, the belief that we have inherited. And so we do that once again from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You can be seated. As we gather our hearts and minds for prayer, I'd ask if there are joys or concerns to be shared in our community this morning. Well, let's join our hearts in prayer, praying for the church, for our church, for our community, for the world, for one another. And let's pray together, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. It is good to give thanks to you, O Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love on this morning and your faithfulness at night. For you, O Lord, Make us glad by your work. At the work of your hands, we sing for joy. Therefore, we pray, Lord, to see your work in us, around us, in your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, you said that when a lamp is brought in, it's not to be under a basket, but on a stand, that it sheds light for all to see. Let the light of your goodness shine in your church. Set us up like a lamp. Let the power of your kingdom hidden in our weakness be revealed for others to find faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, you spoke of people who have no roots. We pray for all who may be facing trouble or persecution on account of the gospel that you would give them strength to hold and endure with you. And even more, we pray for all who indeed feel rootless in our world today, like they don't know where they belong. Give them community to ground them and to nurture them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. You spoke of thorns and thistles. We pray for friends or neighbors who feel choked by the cares and concerns of life. Liberate them from the things they do not need. Sustain them through concerns in which they have deep needs. Make room again for grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. You spoke of a harvest to come, but we pray for those who are still hungry. Hungry for actual food on their plates. Hungry for peace in their homes and on their streets hungry for unity that's deeper than an inch. Don't only plant, but feed us, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. You spoke of mustard seeds, so small, yet containing such life. Make us here at Timnath Church like your mustard seed in Timnath, that through our small life together, you might extend the branches of your love and rest to others and to all whom we encounter this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and who taught us to gather up all our prayers, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to have a congregational meeting, I'm reminded of all the ways in this last year that you've given yourself to the ministries of Timnath Church, but more than that, given yourself to the kingdom of God. 
um, and grateful for the ways we're going to celebrate where God might be leading us in this new year. So may we continue to give, and may we do so even now in our morning offering. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, for giving us these gifts to share, for giving us life with one another, for giving us a space where we can come together beyond all the things that might divide us in the world, for giving us yourself. We ask now that you would take these gifts and take our lives, and as you have your life in us, now scatter us out and scatter these gifts out to be signs of the life of your kingdom in Timnath and throughout the world. We ask this in Jesus' name, and together we say, Amen.
Dear church, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, the seed of the kingdom, Jesus himself. May you listen to him this week, accept him, and let him bear the fruit of his mercy and love in you and through you, even as you accept his blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve. Stay for a meeting.